Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the periodic inventory system, what it is, and how to record transactions using the journal entry. In the description below, there's a link to a lesson on the perpetual inventory system, which also explains what it is and how to record transactions using the journal entry. So be sure to check that one out, which will help you compare and contrast the two inventory systems and also understand them better. Now let's look at the periodic inventory system. What is it? The periodic inventory system is a system that records the movement of inventory at specific periods and not continuously. So I have a few notes here. The purchase of inventory is recorded in the purchases account. The purchases account is updated continuously while the inventory account is updated at specific periods. The volume of inventory is updated at specific periods and not continuously like the perpetual inventory system. The subsidiary ledger account relating to inventory is not updated after each transaction. So let's bear that in mind. And the purchases account that I've just spoken about here is not a permanent account. It's a temporary account that we record for the purposes of our books and our accounts. So it's not a, an account which you'll see in the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. So we bear that in mind as we look at these examples. So I have a few examples here. And these are the same examples that we use in explaining the perpetual inventory system. So now let's look at the purchase of inventory using the periodic inventory system. It tells us here that 50 units of inventory at 10 rand per unit were purchased on cash on the 5th of November 2018. So how do we record this? Well, with the periodic inventory system, we debit purchases, the temporary account that I just spoke about. And the amount there is 50 units times 10 rand per unit, which gives us 500 rand. And the credit there will be a bank because we used cash to purchase the inventory. So money is leaving our account, so we credit bank. 500 rand. That's how we record purchases of inventory using the periodic inventory system. So let's look what happens when we sell inventory and how we record it using the same inventory system. It tells us here that 30 units of inventory at 20 rand per unit were sold on the 7th of November 2018 and it was sold for cash. So we know if we sold inventory for cash, we receive money and we debit our bank. And the amount there is 30 units times 20 rand per unit gives us an amount of 600 rand there. Our credit, well, we just sold inventory. So our credit will be sales or revenue. And the amount there is 600 rand. That's also how we record sales of inventory using the periodic inventory system. Now let's look at what happens at the end of the period. We know that the purchase account that we just used here, like I mentioned, is a temporary account. So we also notice that we have not recorded anything pertaining to inventory in both the, 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 the purchase of inventory and the sale of inventory. We can see that there is nothing that pertains to inventory here. So like the notes say, if you look at note number two, it says the purchase account is updated continuously while the inventory account is updated at specific periods, mainly at year end or the end of the financial year. So we're assuming here that the end of the period is 31 December 2018. So let's see what happens in, on 31st of December 2018. So since our purchase account over here is a temporary account, we need to cancel that account. And how do we cancel it? We need to credit the account. And the amount there is 600 rand. So let's start with our credit side. So whatever is on the purchase side of the account, we credit all those amounts. And we only have one amount there, which is 600 rand. Uh, no, 500 rand, sorry. 500 rand. As you can see here, it's 500 Rand. So we're crediting it. So by crediting it, we're obviously canceling the transaction. Now, we, since we have not recorded anything pertaining to inventory, we need to record that. So first of all, we need to figure out what the cost of goods sold is. And that is our first debit. So let's type the cost of goods sold. And what is the amount there? Well, I've just written here the formula for calculating cost of goods sold. It's units sold times purchase cost per unit. So how many units did you sell? Well, as the example tells us here, 30 units of inventory were sold. So the amount there will be 30 units. And how much did you purchase those units at? Well, you we purchased 50 units at 10 rand per unit. So those 30 units were purchased at 10 rand per unit. So 30 units times 10 rand gives us an amount of 300 rand. So, so far we can see our debit and our credit do not balance. The, the amount that is missing there is 200 rand on our debit side. So what is that which is missing? Well, we have not recorded inventory. So it will be inventory. So I'll type the inventory. 
inventory. And what is the amount there? Well, here's how we calculate the ending inventory, which will be required to be calculated using the period periodic inventory system. So the ending inventory equals to beginning inventory. Well, since we are not given the beginning inventory, we are only given the purchase of inventory, we assume that the beginning inventory is zero. But if you had the beginning inventory, you put the amount there, plus the purchase during the period. How much inventory do we do to do purchase? We purchased 500 rand worth of inventory, so we put there 500. Minus cost of goods sold. How much was the cost of goods sold? We have just calculated it here. It's 300 rand. So minus 300. And our ending inventory is 200 rand. And we can see that 200 plus 300 equals 500. So our debits and our credit balance. And that is simply how you calculate the movement of inventory. How you calculate, how you calculate, how you account for the movement of inventory or transactions relating to inventory using the periodic inventory system. I hope that has helped and not too complicated. And if this video has helped you or any of our videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and also share some of these videos to those that might help. Till next time, cheers.